So I wanted to take a look at uh, Haskell gRPC, um, which I looked at. I did a video where I looked at the source code before. That's up on um, on my YouTube, and I wanted to uh, try to play around with it. I spent a bit of time uh, Monday and Tuesday trying to get things to build in different environments. What I settled on is uh, I can't get the tests to work, and um, but but it seems to I seem to be able to build with um, with Nick Shell on on Geeks. I also tried um, building on on a couple of versions of Debian, and um, but I think that this should be okay. So I don't have I don't think I have a test uh, loop cycle um, like I would like to have for for playing around. But I I do believe I'm able to build this uh, this example server that they have in the repo, and uh, let's see if I can run it. Okay, so I have some server. So I can start the server. I don't get any output, but I believe if I start the client, it will do some sort of networky stuff. Yeah, okay, there. So it does some adding and uh, gives you some some equation. So I wanted to do what I wanted to do is take a look at take a look at this. I'm familiar with with gRPC. I'm not so familiar with Haskell, uh, so I won't necessarily know what I'm doing. And I'm definitely not familiar with with Nix or Cabal or really even Geeks, so I'm expecting that um, things may not work out the way that I want them to. Actually, why don't I go ahead and see if I can just run the shell in Emacs? I seem to be able to. And I'll see if I can run the client. That seems good. I don't see really any reason to have multiple shells open. So I guess that's okay for now. I'll just leave the server running in the background until I, until I restart it. So this is generated code generated by the protocol protocol buffer. Hi, Karin. I'm doing all right. How are you? And good evening to you, never know. Um, I'm realizing now that I may not have the code that generates this server. Okay, so here's the arithmetic.hs. So I guess the first question is, can I generate this? Or does this come with the repo? And then what else is here? We have the arithmetic proto and the client and the server. And I looked at this tutorial, but the tutorial I can't get to work. So it, it says to call stack build. Um, this doesn't work on the various machines I've tried it, but that's okay. And then so is the client also, so what was I looking at? Arithmetic.hs is, is auto-generated, but the client and the server I don't think are. So here's the client implementation, and then I can open up the server, I guess, side by side. Let me pull this chat off for just a minute. Oh, sorry, that's, this is the server implementation. I'll pull up the client on the right. Okay. So there's not much here once we have the once we have the generated code. And we can see what the client is doing. First of all, the server is, I guess, is calling arithmetic server with some handlers. And we've got the running sum handler and the add handler. And somehow that's kicking off some sort of infinite loop. And in the client, we're going to create a, a client object, I guess. I'm not sure what this dot, dot, dot notation means. But we're going to create a request. And I don't know where meta1 and meta2 come from. We're going to get a response. Crawl arithmetic add. Client normal request with two ints. I guess these are return values. And we're going to just, when we get the response, we're going to put two plus two equals as a string and show the response, which is a one int object. And if we're running sum, we're going to call the running sum call message thing. And we've got the send thing. 
And I guess we're sending one, two, and three as a list, either's, and we're getting some reply. And if we get a just, if it, we get a reply that's populated as a maybe, then we're going to show it. And here, client writer request it looks like we're, this thing seems to be a, a lambda, but they're running some is, is client streaming. So it looks like a, even though it's client streaming, it looks like I'm passing in essentially all of the requests at one time, but I'm not sure that's what's going on. And at any rate, it looks like we're listening on five, um, what is this? 50,051. Hey, hey, uh, Lewis. How goes it? I, I hope everyone's doing well. All right. So I guess the first thing I want to know is, can I, can I generate this code? And I guess let's look up on GitHub what that looks like. So the generated code is is checked into um, is checked into to source control, version control. I don't know if that means I can't generate it. So I saw before that they had some they had some other libraries, including like Proto three something or other. I think it's the same people. Proto three suite. Maybe this is what generates code. The using compile. Maybe this is it. Uh, based on the name and the generated Haskell module on the file name of the input proto relative to the okay. Let's try this. I'm not sure what the chances are that this is going to work in geeks, considering how hard I had to work to get the other stuff working. But we're going to try it. What do I have to do? I have to run Nick shell and compile build. All right, this might take a while to to build. So I had some open questions in my mind about what some of this syntax was. Let's see if we can look that up while the thing that might be able to compile my protos is working. So where was the, we were, oh, it was, it was like arithmetic client. We were assigned to this dot, this dot, dot. I think there's some, some kind of rec record. All right, well, I'll ask ChatGPT. So some kind of pattern matching syntax? Likely returns a monadic value, possibly an IO action, that generates an arithmetic record. The arithmetic dot dot pattern match is then used to extract all the fields of the record and bind them to variables with the same names as the fields. Okay, that's cool. Um, so it's just, I guess, reusing the names is the main thing it's doing. Now, what I don't know is if I can get tags for. I guess tags is no longer my history. So let's look up Haskell tags. Yeah, I don't, this, I'm, so GHC can generate them, but I'm not confident I can load all the modules properly. I mean, maybe I'll try ask tags. Okay, GHC has tags. When I try to install GHC from outside of the, outside of the geeks world, I tried using the GH cup installer which I eventually got to work, but um, it, uh, it you had to you had to make it aware of the Geeks linker because Geeks wraps the linker, and then it makes you know the um, the Geeks uh, shared objects are in the user directory and not where um, not where GHC expects them to be. So I eventually got around that um, using patch elf to to actually patch the the binary to look for um, where the linker actually is but that that strategy doesn't really scale because one of the things that the Haskell build systems like do is to download other versions of GHC um, and then those all have to be patched and I, I don't see really a way to to like plug into the into that download logic and stack or whatever and patch everything it downloads. So um, there are, 
I found some kind of hacky ways to, to get around that. But um, the easiest way to get around it was just to switch to, to Debian for a while, which I did. And um, that was much easier. But I figured since um, Nix Nick, was required to, to, to supply the, the necessary dependencies, the main one of which is gRPC, and uh, the getting a specific version of gRPC um, from the even the Debian package manager was a little bit challenging, and building it from scratch was a bit obnoxious. So, um, so I ended up just staying with with the Nix Nix setup. All right, so I'm downloading a bunch of stuff. And what was I doing here? I was building. Okay, so now I have Proto Three Suite build, I think, or at least the. I think I just ran Nick shell. Is that what I just did? Let's see if Cabal will, will build it. Segmentation. All right. Um, so one thing, let's see. I feel like I've come across this before. And I think I just have to unset my library path. See if that works. Hey, look at that. This will compile some more stuff. Okay, so we found out that this is record syntax. Now what I want to do is understand what this is actually doing. So here's the function call itself. You know what? I'm just going to narrow the region. We're going to call arithmetic, arithmetic, arithmetic running sum um, on a client rec writer request, which takes a one in a list. And then we're passing it a function, it looks like. Or we're applying that to a Lambda. Let's see if we can find client writer request. Okay, so we have client writer request here. This is probably a definition. I'm going to take a timeout in seconds, a metadata map, and a stream send request. And I guess it'll return a client request of client stream, client streaming. Why is it re returning a request? Okay, so client request is a is data. It's got a request and a response. I think we looked up maybe this syntax before, but I think that this is using some sort of fancier. Is this kinds? I think this might be kinds. I guess this somehow means that uh, for each of these different kinds, we get like a slightly different client request object. And so for client writer request, I don't know what it's called writer. I don't think that's a necessarily a concept in gRPC, but the type seems to be timeout seconds, metadata map, a stream send request turning IO and a client request a client streaming request response. Let's look at stream send. Did we import it? What is this? Import a uh, low level stream send. The type stream send of A is a thing that is going to have, that has an A, or it's, um, that is a thing that's going to consume an A and return an IO of either, G, either we're getting an error or it's like a, or, or no return value. And what I don't understand is it seems like, it seems like in order to call the streaming method, we may need, um, we have to have this function and the, it seems like we need to know ahead of time, all the things we're going to send to the server. Is that right? Client writer request, right? So how do we create this function if we don't know yet all the things that we're going to send to the server? Like we need to send, um, you know, we may know, we may know one thing to send or, uh, more realistically, we might just set up the connection and not know anything. And then, uh, you know, over time compute various things. So I'm not sure how to, um, how to think about that. 
because just because I don't know Haskell. But maybe we can look at other implementations. You know, you may need to listen to, to some other, you know, you may be a server for some other service. And let's say, let's say that just the simple case where you're forwarding requests from another service, then I guess what you would do is you would just wrap um, all of your logic that is ever going to emit anything. You would wrap this in, in this argument. What you want to be able to do is to establish a connection with the server and have the server wait until you send stuff. But it seems like, at least naively, if I'm understanding laziness correctly, this is something that's going to resolve to an IO before it actually reaches out to the server. Is that right? All right, let's see where our, um, let's see what we have here. Okay, so it seems like Cabal built. What about GHC, uh, was it something tags? Ask tags? Ask tags. Is there a recursive? I could try just running hask tags on setup.hs, let's say. And what was the thing to generate um, e tags? E? And do I have like recursive? No, yeah, it seems to work. It's actually pretty impressive. Okay, so let's try clamp clan config. Yeah, okay, seems to work. Awesome. All right, so now I I believe that I can at least try to compile some protos. And I want to be in this. Do I have this thing? Okay. Maybe example tutorial. Let's copy arithmetic proto to Ants proto, just so I don't overwrite anything. Does that work? If ants.haskell. All right. I think we're soon to be in business. Yeah. Okay. So it generated some code, which is great. And I guess that what I want to do is first, I want to, it's okay, so some proto three thing here. So add is going to take two ints and return one int. And running sum is going to take one int and return one int. That's actually pretty reasonable. Maybe we can add a method. What do I want to do? Let's add, let's just try adding a multiply method. That's about the simplest thing we can do, right? It should be, it should be hard to get this wrong, which is my first goal. So let's generate this arithmetic proto. Um, and now I'm hoping, now I'm hoping that um, it will fail to build because I haven't implemented the multiplication method. Okay, so this did fail. And now we're getting a new a new error with polymorphic. Oh no, proto buff wrappers polymorphic. I guess maybe the issue is that, that the generated file um, is different from, wait, what? Google protobuf wrapper is polymorphic. What is this? Is this a Google um, Haskell library? There was a, was it ProtoLens? Okay, so I'm guessing that they copied this from uh, the Google, the Google ProtoLens repo. But this version of the generated code is sufficiently different from the, the version that's checked in that it looks like grpc Haskell no longer knows how to build this, um, this, this file. I put crazy colors on this. So what's changed? Um, okay, so we've gotten rid of one protobuf import and we've gotten another and we've acquired this, this protobuf wrapped thing. And then there's some, some differences in the generated code. I might be able to add a dependency to Cabal. I'm not sure what the right way to go about this is. I certainly don't know anything about Cabal. Um, where did arithmetic go? Arithmetic server and arithmetic client. And proto, so these are going to depend on Proto3 suite. And what was the name of the module that I don't have? Oh, but I, I guess um, the version I have from GitHub may not be the version that Nix knows about. I don't know how to test. What if I just try finding Proto3 suite in the Nix directory? 
And here we have 0 0.6.0, here we have 0 0.4.3. I'm gonna guess 0.4.3 is the version that I actually have. 0.4.3 doesn't seem to exist as a tag. Is it a release? The releases seem to be just the tags. And 0.6 whatever also doesn't seem to exist. Let's try 0.4.2. We also have this compiled protocol. Okay, so let's just try, um, let's try, no, I don't know which next shell, <laughs> I'm not sure which next shell I'm in here, but I think that I'm, I think this, this um, terminal is in the shell for uh, Proto3 Suite. Is it like this? Slash? Okay. Um, let's try, I guess, Cabal Clean and Cabal Build. And so while that's doing that, I, I guess I want to think a little bit about um, how I would want the, um, the client streaming stuff to work. Maybe let's look at, um, see if we can find the client streaming for Java and see what its signature is. We've got a unique pointer to client reader of feature called reader stub list, and you're going to pass in a stub. Yeah, I'm guessing the the way to do it is it, it would take a stream. Once you finish writing a client's request to the stream using write, we need to call write done. This is this looks like so client side side client side streaming record route is similar, except that we pass the method a context and response object and get back a client writer. Okay, so this is similar to the um, the writer language that was in the, GRP, the the Haskell one. We've got some writer. We're getting writer, and here's the context. And stats is maybe the the response object. Make a unique pointer to writer. And for each of these things, we're going to call writer write, which is what the kind of the API was expecting. So you get some sort of object that lets you put things on the wire, essentially. And then when you're done, you tell it you're done and you call finish and you get back a status. So that's, that's kind of how I would expect it to work in general. Let's see how it works in Go. Here's, here's Go. So, okay, similar to the server side method, except that we only pass a method, the method of context and get a route guide and record client stream back, which we use to both write and read messages. So we basically get message queue is how I'm going to think about it. We've got all this nano stuff. Somewhere there's a real method call. Here's stream close. Here's record route, record route, or I guess record route. And you're just going to give it a, a context. And you're going to get stream in error. And then you're going to call stream send. And then you're going to call stream close and receive. It seems like the kind of thing that you want for Haskell. You want to get some sort of stream object, um, but a generic enough stream. So is that what we have? Maybe that is what we have. And I'm just misunderstanding. And let's check in on oh, the build. 0.4.2 because of this AST thing. Couldn't match file path. All right. Well, let's try another tag. Was it 5.0? Oh, you know what? Before we try that, maybe the problem is that I need to cre recreate the Nick shell with the config that's in this that's in this tag. Okay. So now that, with that in mind, let's go back to the um, client client writer request. We just have the stream send thing. Can I go to the definition. Yeah. All, right. All right. So the stream send. Gonna take an A and return an IO either G or CIO and stream send prim. So this is the thing. I, I don't think um I guess you might be able to get an error back for each send. But you shouldn't get a status back, I guess. So stream send prim, maybe primitive, is gonna take a call and a completion queue and return a stream send byte string. And then you call writes done. So I guess you do get I guess you do get this. This um I think I was just misunderstanding maybe how stream send works. We've also got stream receive, but when is, who calls writes done? So we do get writes done in um, client.haskell, both in network slash gRPC low level and in high level. So let's take a look at high level. So a bi-directional request, I guess we have this writes done object, but not in the, um, doesn't seem like we have it in here. So what does bi-directional do? It takes a, it's got a stream send and a stream receive. I think under the hood in, in real gRPC, everything is a bi-directional stream, if I remember correctly. And um, maybe it would just be better to have everything have a... Um, so it seems like what Go does, at least, is you can both receive and send um, even on a client-only stream. And then you can call writes done. So I'm wondering if that's maybe the right way to do both client and server streaming, as well as bi-directional streaming. And then somehow, 
and somehow, like if you're doing client streaming, you make it so that stream receive, you, know, you can't call unless um, unless you're ready to close it. There is go. So it calls close and receive. So you close and you receive at the same time. Look at server side streaming for the client. You get stream receive. And I guess you don't need to close. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure. Maybe if um, anyone sees this who's actually familiar with this code, you can tell me if I'm misunderstanding this. But uh, I'm kind of getting the feeling that this is requiring me to know at call time when I create the request, everything I'm ever going to stream to it. All right, let's see if this Proto 3 suite. So let's see if uh, did that compile. This is a warning. I think it compiled. I just tried to compile build, right? Service options should have 10 arguments, but it has been given nine. I feel like this is something I can fix. The service options, server set um, max message length is the last one. I'm guessing they added one to the end, right? Metadata size, maybe natural. Do I just add this here? Let's try that. So parse error. Do I just need a call up uh, comma? Okay, perfect. This is what, this is the original failure I wanted. So um, arithmetic multiplication is not initialized, which is expected because I haven't implemented it. So in arithmetic server, I'm just going to take add. I want to create a new handler, and I'll just change all occurrences of add to multiplication. And I'll change um, answer to this to just star instead of plus. And then I presumably I need to somehow register this handler, right? I guess here, arithmetic, arithmetic mall equals mall handler. And I think I need a comma which I guess is conventionally at the beginning of the line. And so if all is right with what I just did, it should maybe fail on client. I guess client doesn't care. This client doesn't know, need to know everything that's implemented. Okay, so now um, I can create a call to multiplication. Is that all I do? Let's try that. The binding for X chat is the existing binding. Is that bad? Is that a warning? It should be an error. What if I change it to a Y? What's the existing binding? It seems like um, something I'm doing wrong. So it says, um, oh, Y is down here on line. There we go. I don't know why I couldn't do that before. All right, so, um, so the Y is down here on line 41. So I guess it's Z. Seems to work. Let's try to run it. The server runs. I guess let's see if we can call the client client here. Hey, all right. Okay, <laughs> successfully. I successfully modified 
um, the proto file and added a handler, a, a unary handler, which is fine by me. I don't think I've ever actually used streaming in real life. Um, we try anything else. See if we can go further. Let's try. Um, let's try calculator. And calculator is going to take calculator will take a calculator message and returns a calculator response. And I think this will. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'll get this to work, but if I do, this will be the last thing I think I, I have time for. Oh, sorry, calculator request. Calculator request and calculator request is going to take an operation and a. I guess it'll take two ints and it, it'll it'll take an operation in two ints and then it'll just return uh, one int and the one int or returns will be called uh, result and I think that's good enough. It's <laughs> good enough for now. Let's not get too crazy. Uh, let's see. That should hopefully compile. Okay, good. And so now we'll need to implement some stuff in the server. Let's just grab. First of all, let's just verify that um, that things build with this. Oh, okay. So I need to go back. And it's telling me that I haven't implemented my new method, which is good. So that's the sort of thing I think um, that Python won't do, I believe, which is uh, it w if you fail to implement a method, you typically don't know until like you try to call it in Python, if I remember correctly. Um, but Haskell and some other languages will tell you if you um, if you didn't if you didn't complete an implementation. So we'll call this the calc. I don't know what the Haskell naming style is, but we'll try the full name calculator handler. Oh, and here's, this is weird. So normal, I don't know what it means, but um, it should just take a calculator request and a calculator response, right? And we're gonna take a server, for some reason we need to, I guess, repeat the um, repeat the type down here again. Do, let's just try return, should be able to return an error, right? Return, um, wait, can I not return an error? Seems like I have to return a server response. So, Let's see what the implementation of server normal response is. We've got a response, metadata, status code, status details. Let's see if we can find um, an example of an error code. We'll return server normal response. I don't know if I can return like an empty object. I'll, just, I'll call it nil for now, but I, I, I think I have to actually create, I think I have to manually create an empty object maybe. So um, I'm going to guess that status not impl implemented is what the thing is called. Um, I'll return empty metadata, which I think I can do by saying m empty. And then I need to create a sort of calculator response, which how do I do that? I can use let. Is right, let oh, but not an arrow. Let that uh, response be calculator response of negative one. And that I'm pretty sure this is not going to compile, but let's see what the compiler tells us. Expecting one or more arguments to server request. Expected a type, but server request normal calculator request has kind start as R. Okay. So what line is this on? 36? Or 36. Okay, so for the for these other ones, we get a full I'm not sure what this what this is called, but it seems like this is kind of this is kind of weird. I don't know. It seems like I can't just say that I want a calculator request object. I need to put it in parentheses and give it names. And I'm not sure if I can recursively do this. Oh, no, that's not what it wants. It wants the, huh, they want that? The constructor calculator request should have two arguments. So on line 38 now. Okay, so here I think it wants the arguments to it. And here I can say maybe operation and two ints x and y, perhaps. It seems to have gotten, gotten farther. It's been given three, okay. Maybe I just need to not wrap two ints. That is not implemented. What was it called? Unimplemented. Okay. 
Now, if I had a proper build thing, I it could just type G here. It doesn't like unimplemented. It likes it. It doesn't like it because I should not be capitalized. All right. And now, couldn't match maybe one int to calculate a response with calculate a response. Okay. So what do so answer? I just type nothing there. I guess if, if it's a maybe, maybe I can just type nothing. No. Expect to type IO server response normal calculate a response. Actual type server response normal maybe. Okay, can I do, okay, so can you calculate a response of nothing? There we go. Defined but not used is two ints. Well, that's all right. I don't feel like I need to use it. Let's try running the server again. I'm not, I'm not making any requests with the client yet. That's okay. I guess let's make sure that everything, okay, so now let's add the call to the client. And so I'm gonna grab this thing and, and change it. So mall the calculator, and it won't take one int, it'll take what, a client, Calculator request. Oh no, it wants the response to be the response. And the request is going to take client, oh, no, no, just calculator request of. See that compiles? It does not, unsurprisingly. Calculator response should have one argument, but it's given none. Well, the response should have a one. And how about RSP calc response? Uh, failed to build. Defined by not used operation. I don't care about defined by not used. And arithmetic calculator is not. I think I maybe just didn't register the handler after I made it. I think handler registration was at the top. Uh, calc, uh, maybe it was arithmetic calculator. I think that's right. Look that. Closer. Parse error on input. Client on line 33. I just have some, perhaps this should be in a do block. Maybe. Well, it's in this larger do block. Did I forget to close a parenthesis or something? Yeah, I did. Here? Closer. Uh, incorrect indentation, probably. There's a 34. I think I just forgot a parenthesis there too. In fact, I think I've, what have I done? Didn't I have like a one and some stuff here? Maybe, Let's see how that goes. I could match calculator request with two ints. There's two ints here. Expect to type client request, normal two ints, one int. Actual type client request, 33. Yeah, I need to change this. This is just calculate. You're so close. Okay, so, uh, wait, hmm. Couldn't match type maybe one int with actual type one int in calculator response. So 32, I guess it wants me to have, because it's a message that contains another message, I think it, maybe I need to adjust, and I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna add the parentheses just in case. I don't know if the parentheses are strictly speaking required. Couldn't match, okay, so again, this is a nested field, so maybe I need to adjust here. It's a little bit, um, a little bit unwieldy all these justs and maybes, but maybe, maybe that's just how Haskell is. All right, and the second argument of calculated request, couldn't match maybe two ints with actual type of two ints on 33, where's 33? Let me just change one of these. Oh, I changed the wrong one. So for example, it seems like it's, it's fine with the string literal, but the other ones, it, it has a maybe in front of it. I'm not in constraint, maybe, all right, this should be just just. I think that's what I wanted. All right, this is looking good. Failed. Okay, but why did it fail? Linking failed. Failed to build arithmetic server. Oh, here we go. Define but not used. Is that really an error? Let's see if we are, um, let's try a warn. I guess it has to rebuild everything from scratch. Okay, I think that built. I have, when I told it that I don't care about warnings as errors. All right, so let's see if that works. Restart the server. Okay, I get a new error. Use error, pattern match failure, and do expression. All right, 32, 3.99. So this is a runtime error. So I guess that happens in Haskell. So calc response. But I can't just show the calc response, I guess, because where's my calculator one? So the calculator result is equal to 
and then I'll just try putting in a ran uh, just a string. How about putting in a number rising from show? How about we just get rid of the rest of the string? This wasn't this, where I started the server, was it? Okay, so if I change that to nothing, it seems to be happier with that. So maybe that worked. Okay, so ser server works now. And what about client? Okay, great. Perfect. All right, so the last thing I want to do is actually implement this calculator thing. We'll just do um, let the response equal five. I'll return status, okay? With an empty message and no metadata. And this is called response. Right, it's not compiling, no surprises. So 41 calculated response, one int, could match type one int with calculated response. So where's 41? Oh, this should be calculator response of response. Uh, maybe just response. Seems like it might have worked. All right, let's get rid of this. These things are confusing me. So we start the server. Good, good. Okay, so calculator is on, response is returning five. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually do the calculations. So I do like a switch. I could definitely at least have like a helper function. We'll do help calculate of operation two ints. And then I'll need to implement this, this function, right? So help do take a string and how does it do it? Do two ints. Like that. And then help calculate. I guess. I don't know if these are actually ints. And then if um if I don't recognize the string, I'll just return negative, negative one. Something like that. A good match int with one int. Okay, so. Close. Okay. It wants GHC in dot in thirty two. Does this work? What if I just don't give it a type? What's that? Seems like that might have worked. Okay. I guess type inference do what it's supposed to. Okay, so I get calculated result two. I don't remember what math problem I gave it. Okay, so I gave it um, one and two and multiplication. Yeah. Okay, so what if I give it one and two in addition? Hopefully we will get three. Yeah, look at that. All right, so um, that was that was that was instructive. I'm gonna stop there. Uh, what did I learn? Well, I learned how to I learned how to how to how to build the project. Um, I ran into a few issues. I, I think they all boil down to um, one, me not knowing what I'm doing, and two, some sort of divergence between my setup and uh, and the development setup. But once I got Nick's working on Geeks, 
it's, it, it was mostly smooth sailing. It seems like a nice library. I, mean, I was able to compile a proto and um, send some RPC messages. They do have some tests that verify that um, the gRPC Haskell clients and servers, I guess, can communicate with gRPC servers and clients in other languages. So right now I'm just going to assume that that works. The um, Some of this stuff with, with juggling around um, justs and maybes is a little bit opaque to me, but I expect that if I were um, had more felicity with Haskell, that this is really just um, um, this is really just me not knowing what I'm doing, <laughs> and um, I I guess I still have an open question in my mind about whether um, whether client streaming uh, does um, has the kind of natural API where um, I can continue to stream requests to the server or whether I really need to know ahead of time exactly what I'm going to stream. And it, it may be the case that that server streaming has the same open question, but it seems like it looks at least from the signature of the function that bidirectional streaming um, has kind of the expected API. So all in all, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, it seems like you could use this to build out um, real Haskell services. And I believe that, um, I believe that, that this is used in production by the um, by the folks who made this to, to to actually do Haskell stuff with gRPC. So, I think the next step for me is um, I'd like to I'd like to work in Haskell. Um, I'd like to work in gRPC as opposed to REST. So I think I'm going to persist with this, um, this library for a little bit, and um, maybe as I get my bearings with Haskell, it'll be clearer to me um, how to add functionality that that makes that you know can make my life easier. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I don't want to use Nix as the as the build as as a, um, a dependency for the for the build system. So I think the next step is for me to try to see if I can get Basil to work with Haskell. And I did do a video where I looked at um, Haskell rules. A, a different repo from a different group of folks. Um, whether that can be used to build gRPC services, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think that this, these these two projects are related at all. But I think that's a natural sort of thing to do if you're coming from the background I'm coming from as a as a as a former Googler. Um, that that's how that's how I prefer things to work. So um, we'll we'll do that at some point. Um, so that's it for now. On Friday, I'm going to do code reading um, with fan request roulette, and I'll uh, I'll see some of you then. Thanks for watching.